When I installed Apple TV, the photos on my laptop became my TV screensaver. My son Brendan asked me, why do you look so sad in these pictures? They were from my first trip to Ireland when I was 10 years old. It was my father's first trip home since he had emigrated. I already knew the famous family story. In the early hours of January 3, 1941, a German bomber dropped its load on Denor Terrace in neutral Dublin, where my teenage father lived with his family. My Uncle John was a theater critic and had just sat down to write his review. He heard a voice that kept insisting he leave the dining room. As soon as John left, the windows shattered, the stairs collapsed, and stars shone where the roof had once been. Margaret was mortified that her underclothes decorated trees blocks away. Patrick's trousers and suspenders were sucked up the chimney. They needed a ladder to get downstairs. This was not the family's worst story. Mental illness, tuberculosis, alcoholism, and homosexuality were all shame-filled family secrets guarded for decades. When I returned from Ireland in 1963, I was talking non-stop about my summer adventure. My teacher, Sister Mary Ermengarde, set me on a life path when she suggested that I start writing about it. A year and a half later, we were playing in the park when a boy told me I should go home. An ambulance had taken someone from my house. I was angry and told him it wasn't true, but it was true. My mother had been sick off and on for almost eight years. I'd seen her scars, but didn't know it was cancer. The children weren't allowed to go to her funeral. We stayed home with my mother's mother while she watched her soap operas. While we quietly played Parcheesi the next day, she said we were bad children and had killed our mother. When I grew up, I felt compelled to help families struggling with cancer. I understood the confusion, fear, and loneliness of their children. I wrote about what grief looks like for teenagers. I learned how to read and write my way out of a childhood where the most damaging bomb was the invisible one. <laughs>